On April 3rd, Nightcrawler Robotics began 3D printing face shields in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our story of how a high school robotics team 3D printed over 5,000 face shields while working with other organizations and robotics teams to fulfill orders for over 15,000 shields during the month of April in 2020. It began when one of our coaches asked the local middle school principal if he could pull the seven printers out of the school to print PPE from his office. The principal took it a step further and said if the robotics team was willing to run a lab, he would consolidate all of the unused printers from the three middle schools and our high school into a single location. Within 48 hours of the initial request, we had developed a health safety plan and were setting up printers to create a fabrication lab with the support of our high school and district administrators, as well as the school board. By Monday, April 6th, we were running at full capacity with 24 3D printers. Nightcrawler staffed the lab with one adult and two to four students per shift. Using morning and afternoon shifts, the printers ran six days a week, 10 hours a day. We spent significant time that first week making adjustments to our printer settings and fixing worn out parts in the school printers. Soon we were making over 200 3D printed visors each day. Several people have asked us, how hard was it for the students to switch from building robots to running a big operation that was delivering thousands of face shields a week? The answer is surprising to many, it wasn't that hard at all. Nightcrawler students are taught to work like professionals. We use real world business processes to manage our work we use professional communication tools and adjust quickly when unexpected challenges arise. On the first day in our lab, one of our students completely changed our website to have a new landing page for our COVID-19 response. She included an online order form, which populated a spreadsheet for our back-end order system. The next day, she set up a Scrum board. Scrum is a popular project management technique we use to manage all of our tasks in robotics. We use this process to track our orders from backlog through pickup and delivery. Robotics is a team sport where we divide work, share responsibility, and often jump from one task to the next. When we need to solve a problem for which there is no ready-made solution, we design and build the mechanism needed to accomplish the task. When something breaks during a competition, we quickly assess the problem and fix it. This year, we had multiple situations where our robot had a part break in a previous match and was still being repaired while being positioned on the field for the start of the next match. Our students are trained to work under pressure with a sense of urgency. In many ways, the pivot from building robots to making face shields was a familiar undertaking. The students identified a new challenge, created a plan, executed those plans, and made improvements along the way. While the conditions of this pandemic are unfamiliar, the way in which we transitioned our season fell well within the skill sets we use every day at Robotics. By the time we had optimized our 3D printing process, we discovered obtaining the clear shield plastic was going to be a problem. We started using office supplies such as report covers and overhead transparencies. We soon found that nearly every office supply store was sold out of these products. The answer to this problem surprised us one day when two rolls of plastic weighing 250 pounds each arrived on a big truck from 3M. This provided enough plastic to make 11,000 shield parts. In late April, a maker collaborative sent us two additional rolls capable of making 7,000 shields. Finally, in May, we received a 900 pound roll from Stratasys that would make an estimated 18,000 face shields. You can't just run to the hardware store and buy something to hold a 900 pound roll of material or pick up a cutter for a 24 inch wide piece of plastic. As with robotics, the problem required us to evaluate the problem and build a custom solution. One of our students created a rail mounted cutter from robot parts that used standard utility knife blades. Then later, he iterated on his design to make it bigger and capable of cutting in two directions to improve speed. The principles of design, prototype, test, and iterate naturally flowed into our creating of an assembly line that allowed us to make two to 3,000 shields per day. It didn't take long for the public to take notice of what we were doing. Soon we had thousands of orders in our backlog, far more than we could hope to fill in a month. We created a campaign to get assistance from other organizations and teams to help us create the 11,000 visors it would take to use up our first two large rolls of shield plastic. Within weeks, we had received thousands of visors 3D printed by other teams and organizations. By late April, industry had finally retooled their manufacturing and we started receiving several thousand injection molded visors per week. 
the significant cost and time savings of injection molded over 3D printing led us to stop all printing at the end of April, relying solely on the injection molded visors to fill our orders. TV reporters and newspapers picked up the story and further spread the good news of what we were doing. We received orders from intensive care units, neonatal departments, maternity wards, cardiac units, cancer treatment centers, police departments, fire departments, dentists, daycare workers, senior home and assisted living centers, and those who were caring directly for COVID-19 patients. This experience has led to some great partnerships with other teams in St. Louis, Missouri, Portland, Oregon, Mountain View, California, and Flagstaff, Arizona. We have received orders from several states across the U.S. By partnering with these teams, we have been able to fill large 500 unit orders faster and more efficiently. We started off our robotic season having built a great robot that performed well. We were able to compete at one of our two scheduled qualifying events before the season was canceled. We won our first regional qualifier, securing an entry into the World Championships in Detroit and the Minnesota High School State Tournament. It was the eighth year in a row we had qualified for both tournaments. Sadly, both were postponed and later canceled within days of us returning from our first competition. Our 2020 robotic season may not have ended the way we expected, but it was possible that the season may have become so much more than we could have hoped. The students of Nightcrawler thank all of those who have stepped up to make a difference. Our words of gratitude can never be enough to thank those that continued to go to work every day and protect our community and take care of the ones who needed it most. Thank you for your service. Thank you for being a hero. To the students of Nightcrawler, thank you for demonstrating our core values through this challenge. Thank you for being graciously professional, demonstrating dedication, being innovative, creating structure in our process, and being unflappable through this challenge. We are a high school robotics team. We are making a difference. We are Nightcrawler.